He has what I call the heart of a champion. He always played to win. He always put the team above himself. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to take a look at why Charles Barkley might be even better than most people give him credit for. But before we dive into today's episode, I want to ask you guys for a small favor. Now, I recently checked on my YouTube analytics and it showed that only 5% of my regular watchers are actually subscribed to the channel. So please, guys, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I also want to be one of the bigger NBA channels and I can only do it with you guys. All right, you guys, you know set, let's dive right into today's episode. So how am I going to approach this video? Well, I narrowed it down to seven different categories. So let's start with number one. The first skill that Charles Barkley could kill you with was his post game. Now with Charles, I have to be a little bit more specific. He was no Kevin McHale or Hakeem Olajuwon, but the one thing that Charles could do better than almost any other player was force his way to the basket. No player with his size was as strong on the block as Charles Barkley. He would always fight for the right position, back you down until he gets the perfect spot to score. This with the combination of several moves was simply unguardable. He was the Shaq on the power forward position. His contribution has been zero. Early entrance though for McCray. Barkley getting... Barkley backing Grant. A strong power move by Charles Barkley. Okay, so you always post up, Ernie, up above the box. The reason you post up above the box, because if you post down here, when you make a move, you're going to be going out of bounds. So basketball one-on-one, -on -one, always post on top of the box. The next skill that Charles Barkley could kill you with was his coast-to-coast -coast skill. In the 1980s and 1990s, when the game was way more balanced as it is today, it was very unusual for a power forward to grab a rebound and just go coast-to-coast -coast and take off. In this regards, Charles Barkley was a different breed. Not only was he undersized for his position, but he was super fast with the ball despite being a little bit overweight. So once he grabbed the rebound, it could be that he was in attack mode and run to the other side of the court and stuff the ball or make another spectacular play. Barkley going all the way. It's a pass. It might get out of hand. Not before Charles gets it. Taps it once and can't make it. Charles looks like he's just determined to take over this game. Oh! Manute Bowl 7-7. Seven, seven. Who can't get the rebound? He's up there going. <laughs> so Barker just snatches it, takes it coast to coast, and boom. For a guy his size and, and his uh, girth, you know, a guy could really get up. So when Barkley comes through, you better get out of the way. Barkley's coast to coast was one of those things that made me want, want to learn how to dribble coast to coast. Now that we talked about Charles Barkley's coast to coast plays, we also got to make sure that we don't overlook his passing skills. This again would show that Charles Barkley's basketball IQ was pretty high. He might be a funny and entertaining person on NBA TV, but this guy also knew exactly what to do on the basketball court. If he would post up and get double teamed, he would make a quick pass to the wing player for an open three. Or another example, when he ran the breaks and somebody was open, he would find them. You would not find many power forwards who would average between four to five assists per game. The man that the Lakers made the midseason trade for, Sam Perkins, going to the Sonic. Worthy. Bye. Oh, play of the game. Who's talking about good effort? You gotta make good effort on both ends of the court. Charles Barkley breaks the defense. Out of Arley. Arley against Kelly. Into Barkley. Behind the back to KJ. Baseline. Ten foot. Behind the back pass by Barkley. Well, he just sees the entire floor. He knows who's open. KJ finished it off. And the next skill that I want to talk about is Charles Barkley's shooting. 
Right here, we gotta put things in the right perspective. Charles Barkley was not the greatest three-point shooter in NBA history. And in the era that Charles Barkley played, nobody but maybe Reggie Miller and Dale Ellis and some few other guys really worked on that three-point shot. But Charles would have the talent to make three-pointers when it really mattered. He had countless three-pointers when the game was on the line. And he would also make very tough shots. So you could not really leave him open. If Charles would have worked on his three-point shot, he could have been really, really good. Just like in the 1995 season where he shot 38% from downtown. He had a total of 54% over his entire career, which was really, really good. Rockets are still cold from the field. Here's Charles Barkley. He hits the win to Hakeem against Sean Rooks. Loose ball. Now you got to take the three. Here's the three by Barkley. Yes! At 5.7, Charles Barkley has tied it in 100. And the next category that I want to talk about is the trash talk and the intimidation. Now when we talk about a scary presence on a basketball court, a player who was feared by many of his rivals, we have to talk about Charles Barkley. On my show, The Basketball Time Machine Podcast, I talked to many legends of Charles Barkley's era and not few said that Barkley was feared by many. Then again, he was also a fierce trash talker who would get it on with every superstar who was up for the challenge. And with the guys who could not take it, well, the game was lost before it even started. He said, man, you don't talk honestly enough to the media. You need to tell them what you're really thinking. I said, Charles, you talk too much to the media. You need to stop telling them everything you're thinking. And when Charles was asked about the team's first opponent, his prediction was as honest as ever. I don't know anything about Angola, but Angola's in trouble. Why you push my casket? Because he pushed me. Man, stop it, man. Come on, what's it? Oh, come uh, on. Oh, oh we gotta get a hole. Oh, go. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Oh, my. Boom. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's what you go get, Shaq. You okay. hit him with your wristband. He yeah, came close. All season long. Rodman with a push on the horn. Lane Beer follows with the ball. And then Barkley and Lane Beer. Barkley gets in the left. Lane Beer will come back with an uppercut. And the next category that I want to talk about is obviously the rebounds. To me, the best rebounder of all time is Dennis Rodman. Even though Will Chamberlain averaged way more rebounds per game, to me it also has a lot to do with size. And the second best rebounder of all time, in my opinion, has to be Charles Barkley. A player that in reality was only 6'3", but who would still average between 11 and 15 rebounds per game over his entire career, truly deserves the second spot. And come on, this guy was called the round mount of rebound. Do I have to say more? Chuck, Charles Barkley, you old man. <laughs> Charles Madman Barkley, round mound of rebound, and other funky things. Here I feel my nickname, the bread truck, the love boat, food world, the Frisco kid, which is my second favorite, the wide loathing league, the town of fun, the good time blimp. But my favorite is the round mound of rebound. And he was chiseled with Domino's and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, you know something, ladies and gentlemen, I've been big from the day I was born, and I ain't got no problem with it. This is what it seems going like to take it over like else. him, and it only took about two or three One years, and it was like, you know, it was Charles Town. Comes Charles down the lane. Oh, oh what a rejection by Barkley! Barkley! One of the most unique players in the NBA. We talk about his size, his strength, his jumping ability. The sucker play by Barkley, does it work? Yes! <laughs> People don't realize that Charles Barkley is not more than 6'6". You'd hear like his, he was 6'7", and then you'd, you'd try to say he's only 6'4". There's no way he should have dominated the game the way that he did at his height. And his size and do what he did, still better. So here's Barkley now, gonna go in by himself. Gets the offensive rebound and yeah. slams it. He never seemed to get tired. Just hard fight. He was just like a freight train. He'd get on these fast breaks. Right wow. by Ellis. Oh, Look at it. Look at it. Watch him push. Watch Chuck go. Push it, Chuck. Oh! Boom! <laughs> That's Charles Barkley. He is really a, a, a different guy. His elevator doesn't always go to the top. And always talking trash, you know, as usual. Only on the plays we got is get the ball to me somehow. <laughs> Barkley winds up in the cheerleading section and uh, he doesn't want to get up. <laughs> There's an intelligent man. You got to have a guy who thinks for himself sometimes and not always be what everybody wants you to be. Somebody had to be me. Might as well be me. 
All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe to the channel. I need you guys. All right, see you next time.